Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for purchasing a painting art kit on my website. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, there are links down below and you can get your own art kit. Now, those of you that are here to follow along with my painting tutorial, you are gonna wanna get on some comfy clothes, maybe grab yourself a little beverage and snack. You're going to want to cover your painting surface with some newspapers or plastic tablecloth because this is not washable paint. It is acrylics. You're also going to want to grab your paint brushes and napkins and then you're going to need to make a water cup not for drinking but for cleaning your brushes and don't put it in your favorite cup like my daughter used to. <laughs> Throw it in an old plastic cup. Now, I have all of my paint ready to go on a paint plate that was provided in your kit, but you are gonna wanna leave your paints in the containers. That way, you can just scoop out what you need to mix colors, otherwise just dip right out of the containers to paint on your canvas. If there's any leftover, you could paint your canvas tote bag that came in your art kit or save it for another future project. Now, a couple quick little suggestions. When you are finished with your paint kit, uh, you are gonna wanna wipe off the paint containers before putting the lids on. That way the lid doesn't get stuck. And you're gonna want to scrub your paint brushes out very carefully. So that way you can save them for a new project. What I do is I put a little Dawn dish soap in my hand and then I gently rub the brush in the palm of my hand and I clean it out under the faucet very carefully. Store them upright so that they can dry out thoroughly and then they're ready for another project. Now, you may want to turn on some of your favorite tunes and grab a snack and drink like I said and follow along for some artsy fun. I can't wait to see what you create. Remember, you are your own special artist and your canvas does not have to look like mine. I can't wait to see what we create. Let's get started. All right, I know you're super duper excited to paint this Olaf. I'm so happy that you chose this one and I cannot wait to get started painting it with you. So hopefully you got everything prepped and ready just like the little intro said and let's get started. I am gonna start with my biggest brush, the one that is kind of pointy on both sides. I will flip between camera angles so that way you guys can see see um, both shots. You can see me and then you can see the painting up close. When we hold our paintbrush, we hold it right where the metal and the handle meet, uh, just like you hold a pencil, okay? And remember, this is your own special uh, painting. There's no wrong answer. You do you. You make it look how you want it to. You can add all your own special colors. I might get a little uh, blendy happy with my background because why not? And I will say if you have a little sprinkle of glitter at home, it could be really fun to put a little sprinkle of glitter on your paint while it's still wet. All right, guys. So I am going to, um, like I said, I have all my colors already on my plate because I'm creating multiple videos today. Um, but but you're just gonna wanna paint right out of your container, okay? If we're mixing colors though, then of course, pop them on your plate. For example, if we wanted to make a lighter purple, we can put the white next to our purple and we get just a little bit of purple at a time and then we can add the little bit of purple right in there into our white until we like it. Now, if we want it to take on a little bit of that pink feel, we can grab some white, pop that in there, and then we've got a little bit of that fun pink-ish purple feel. I'm gonna sweep some of that in here, and then I'll put a little up here. Now, before I get too close to Olaf, I want to be very careful Obviously around Olaf's head, it doesn't matter if we're a little cray cray, but around the rest of Olaf, we do want to kind of slow our roll a little 
so that we don't accidentally paint him. Although, although you know what, if that happens, don't worry about it. We can just do some little touch-ups and fix it right up. There we go. Okay, so we got a little bit of our pinky in there. Okay, now we can grab a little bit more purple and mix that in just a little bit. And what I can do is use a little bit, oh, that's not even that noticeable, is it? That's okay, that's a good start. That way we can have a great blending, right? By making it not super noticeable right at the beginning. And we'll get this in here just like that. And notice I'm trying to keep my brush strokes left and right. I'll pop a little up top, just like so. There we go. And I'll put some on the sides as well. And over here on this edge, too. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to grab even more purple and stick a little extra purple in there. Kind of sweep that on in and a little bit on this side. Kind of create some balance. There we go. Just like so, and then we'll keep working our way down. And again, remember be super careful next to Olaf. It's better to flick your brush away from Olaf if you can instead of towards Olaf. Now, if we get a little on the fingers, definitely not going to stress about that because he has stick hands, right? So, the brown will totally cover that up. If you're painting your edges, make sure to bring the color on over to the side as well, just like that, okay? And as you work your way down both edges, you can bring the color down both sides, okay? There we go. Ta-da, fabulous. Okay, so now we can work our way into a little bit more purple, and then I'm gonna start adding some blue in there. Okay, so all I'm doing is I keep adding a little bit more purple into my pile right there, a little bit at a time, so that I have a nice gradual change instead of it being super sharp contrast, like, pink to dark purple. You know, we want it to be a gradual change, not a, a super bam in your face. Unless you want a bam in your face, then you go right ahead. There we go. And we'll pop a little bit more over here, just like so. All right. It is a beautiful sunny day today, although I will say it is extra windy in my part of the world. But it usually is here. Okay. Now, remember we're being extra careful. If you do not trust yourself with the big paintbrush in here, definitely switch to one of your smaller brushes when you're trying to squeeze in smaller areas, right? There. Okay. Now, I'm going to go just a smidge more purple. Just a smidge. Right down in here. There we go. Then I'm going to add blue to my pile. Okay, so here's what I mean. I'm going to grab just a little bit of blue, just a little bit, and mix that in. Oop, see that little bit went a long way, didn't it? It's because it's such a more bold color, and that's why. That's okay. We'll just blend it up, blend it down, blend it up, blend it down, blend it up, blend it down. And so by doing that, it kind of helps it not be like, oop, purple, then blue, right? 
So you really work it. You even use just a little bit of muscle, not much, just a little bit. A little bit of muscle in there. There we go. So cute. And remember, start at Olaf, pull away. He's such a fun character. He definitely is a happy, happy guy. Now we add more blue to our pile. Remember, just a teensy bit. Just a teensy bit. Okay, and see how that's kind of obvious that I just added blue in there? So now I go up and down and up and down. And really, you could just do one solid color. Of course, I'm now telling you that. You don't have to do like I did. You don't have to be all funky and, and doing all your blending. You can always just do one color. You could just do purple or just do blue or mix turquoise and white. That could be really pretty. Um, can't go wrong with some turquoise. There we go. And we got to get all the way down here at the bottom, bottom, and I'm going to put some more blue in my pile. Hold on to my canvas because I don't want to knock it off, really blend in here. There we go. So we start at the bottom. We work that paint left and right and left and right and left and right. There we go. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. Okay, and then remember at some point you got to do your, um, oh, you guys didn't see me, I'm sorry. So at some point you want to do your very, very bottom edge. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop that on there, just like that. There we go, and I'll be careful next to his foot so I don't accidentally paint his foot. There we go. All right, so we got that bottom edge. We got all three sides, or two sides and the top. And now, we're ready for Mr. Olaf. Um, so, to clean your brush, my peeps, you gotta put that brush all the way down in the water, and then we really smush and swirl it, smush and swirl it. There we go. And then, no tap dancing, because if we tap dance, the water will splash everywhere. You'll get something you don't mean to wet. So instead, we wipe and wipe, just like so. And then, this is the part that a lot of people forget. You have to dry your brush every single time you wash it. Okay, what that does is it gets all the extra liquid out of your brush, and then it allows you to be able to take a fairly dry brush and dip it in your paint. If you put a wet, dirty, wet brush in the water, it's gonna, I mean, in your paint, it's gonna dirty up your paint, and then all the water's gonna go dripping down your canvas. So, just saying, okay? Now, in order to give my background a little bit more time to dry, I'm gonna work on Olaf's, um, his um, sticks, right? So I am, I could use straight brown that's out of here, or if you wanna darken it up just a little, you can take a little bit of black, okay, just a teeny bit of black, mix that into your brown until you like your darker version, okay? And you keep adding more brown or more black until you like it. Now we don't wanna paint with a globby brush, so you can roll your brush or you can scrape your brush. And you are ready to get started. 
we'll resituate that. Now, anytime I'm painting an area, and we kind of did this on the outside, is I outline first, just like so, and then I fill it in. Oops. And sometimes when you outline on both sides, it automatically fills it in. But so we outline, outline, fill in. fill in. Okay, same thing over here. Outline. Now, if you want to, one thing that I think is super helpful, friends, is to go ahead and um, if you have a blow dryer, blow dry your canvas. Then that way you can rest the side of your hand or your pinky on your canvas to sort of steady yourself and not worry about accidentally putting it in wet paint that way. So that's an idea of something that you can do to um, help yourself be a little bit more steady. Excellent. Now we got this hand over here. Outline, 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 outline. Outline, outline. Oh yeah, baby, oh yeah. Get this little guy all filled in. Now, one thing, I don't know if you have this at home, but if you get a little bit of paint on Olaf and you're like, oh my gosh, and you're freaking out. First of all, don't freak out. It's fixable, it's just acrylic paint. But second of all, if you have Whiteout OMG, that is like a miracle worker on getting, um, paint covered up so all you got to do you know shake up your white out real good brush the white on where white out on where you don't want it and then let it dry and you can paint right over it can't even tell it's so cool i figured it out on accident one day when i couldn't get white paint to cover up a mistake that i really needed covered up tried some white out bam works great okay so if you got some and you have some oopsies on olap and it's stressing you out just use that, let it dry, then you can paint over. Okay, now that we have the brown painted, I wanna go ahead and you have two choices. You could just leave Olaf alone, okay? You could let him be, don't worry about him. Um, or if you want to, you could put a quick coat of white on Olaf. So I could use my second biggest brush that kind of has the curvy corners and I could pop just a quick little coat of white paint on Olaf and not even worry about like you know if if I get it exactly everywhere now if you're trying to squeeze in places you may really want to use a smaller brush and then use the bigger brush in the bigger areas and if I get a little bit on the mouth or say I get a little bit on the, you know, the nose or a little bit, you know, obviously we want to paint the eyes in. And yes, I just painted right over his pupils, paint his big old tooth, and then we're going to paint his layers here. And be very careful. If you get some of the background color or the brown paint on your brush, then just wipe it off and carry on, okay? There we go. And it's okay if you paint over those little
coals, pieces of coal or his buttons, whatever you want to call them, because you can um, fill that in at the very end. That'll be one of the last things we do. So, and I just did that because this paint, it, it really doesn't have a gloss, but sometimes it kind of feels like it's got a little bit of a semi-gloss to it. Very, very faint semi-gloss. So by putting the white on the white, if the light were to hit it a certain way, then you could tell that it was painted. That makes sense. Um, but it's not necessary. You don't have to paint Olaf white because he is white from the canvas. Um, now, I want for y'all to stand up, take a little stretch break, shake it out, maybe change your music, maybe refill your snack plate or your beverage, get you a little sip, I've got some water. And then, <sighs> take some deep breaths and we can carry on. So I'm going to put this big brush in the water, just let it hang out. Not even worried that I accidentally covered my Sharpie lines because I can use my permanent marker and go back at the end and retrace. That always looks so good. All right, so we're going to go back to a smaller brush. And um, if we want to do Olaf's nose orange, we don't have orange. So we take just a tiny bit of yellow in an even tinier bit of red, mix those together and we can make our own orange, right? Roll that extra paint off and then we can get Olaf's cute little nose all painted in. There we go. All right. And if you want it to be a little bit more orangey, you can always add in more red. But if you put too much red in, it will go to the red side and there'll be no orangeness to it at all because the red will take over, all right? So we got his little nose. Now the inside of the mouth, um, I did black and I did his little coal pieces black as well. So again, I'm sticking with the small brush I'm going to outline on the inside of his mouth. So we outline first. Stay on the inside of the Sharpie if you can. Make sure that you have enough paint on your brush to fill the texture grooves, but not so paint, much paint that it's globby. Okay. Globbies, I guess, are okay since you're painting at home. Um, you don't really have to like take this home because you are home, but um, globbies do take a while to dry and it will create some texture on your canvas. And if you don't want that, then you want to kind of smooth out all your thick spots of paint, okay? Now the black is kind of a funny, funny thing to work with. Sometimes it seems like it's going on really thick and then as it dries it appears almost a little um, thinner than what you thought it was and you find yourself having to pop a second coat on there. But second coats don't take long at all so don't stress if you got to put a second coat on. Now we're going to outline. These baby brushes don't hold much paint so you're going to find yourself dipping in the paint quite a bit but that's okay. And then fill in. Outline, outline, very, very soft touch. That way you don't make a super thick brush stroke. The softer the touch, the thinner the brush stroke. The harder you push your brush down, the thicker your brush stroke will be. There we go. OMG, he's coming together. So cute, my peeps. All right. So, um, you guys can finish filling in all your black, go slow and steady, no rush, and you can um, 
That's cute. Okay, now I'm gonna clean off my baby brush really good, rub it around, wipe, dry, and then I'm gonna get into my white. Now you don't have to do this, but if you want to, just for fun, we can add some swirls to our sky. And what this does is it creates a little bit of movement. So it's almost like the wind is blowing around Olaf, okay? So again, it's just some simple, gentle movements with your paintbrush. And they almost look like um, S's that fell over, right? Go. One more up here. And then you can actually flip your brush upside down, dip it in your paint, and you can do some little dots here and there, wherever you want them. And it almost looks like snow falling, right? Or you could even attempt to make some little snowflakes. That would be fun as well. There we go. So cute. And like I said, um, if you wanted to put a little bit of glitter on there, you most definitely could. Um, but glitter only works on wet paint. <laughs> the word slipped my brain. The glitter only works on wet paint. It kind of serves like glue, okay? So if your background's already dry, obviously the glitter won't stick to it, but it would stick to these little swirly whirlies that we just stuck on there and the dots. Now, if you want to, like I said, if your painting is dry enough, you may have to go blow dry it with the blow dryer, but if you wanted to, you could use your permanent marker and you can go back in there and anywhere that you covered up with white that you didn't want to or you covered up with your background color that you didn't want to, you can definitely do some touch-ups with your black permanent marker, okay? But remember, Sharpies, permanent markers, whatever it may be, do not work on wet paint. So you don't wanna try to use them if your paint is still wet. So that's as far as I'm gonna go with, well, I don't know if this is dry enough. I don't wanna ruin my Sharpie. But again, you can resharpie any of those lines so that they're really bold and stand out. There we go. Okay, yeah, roll that paint off. There we go. All right, now obviously there's still like spots that I should touch up with my black Sharpie, but I'm just kind of that it might be wet. So that's pretty good. That's good enough for you guys to understand what to do. And of course you can re-Sharpie any of those lines. But this was so much fun and he is so super cute. I love it. I hope that you enjoyed the process and enjoyed painting with me. There are plenty more of these winter holiday art kits and of course I have um, Valentine's and spring and Easter and Mother's Day and all of that awesomeness. So if you had the best time, definitely order another kit for another holiday or send one to one to somebody that you love. Why not, right? Definitely subscribe to my channel, turn on the notifications so you know when I upload new videos. And I don't just do painting art kits, I have crafts and art projects as well. So I'd love for you to watch those. You guys have a super great day and I can't wait to see you again.